So, have you ever thought about building your own PC? If you have, and you can use a screwdriver, then all you need is a little know-how and you've got everything you need to do the whole thing. Now the first bit, I can definitely do the second, well that is what I'm here to find out. Stay tuned and we'll take you through all the steps to make your own custom PC that will not only outperform a pre-built machine, but also comes with a sense of self-satisfaction. Well I've never built a PC before so I'm pretty excited. So let's get on with it. The first thing you need to do before you start any kind of work that involves computer components is to ground yourself. I like to think that I keep you grounded. That's as may be. But what we need to do is protect against static electricity. It can easily destroy sensitive components. So what's the easiest way to do that? Well, if you've got an anti-static wrist strap to hand, then you can use that. Yeah, I totally didn't bring one of those with me today. Well, in that case, you need to touch something that's connected to Earth and it'll discharge any static electricity, like a radiator or the metal screw on a light switch. OK, hang on. OK, that's done. Now how do I start building this bad boy? Well, the first thing you've got to decide is which processor you're going to use because this affects a lot of your purchasing decisions. Both Intel and AMD make chips for PCs, but they're not interchangeable. So I've got this Intel Core i7 chip. Is that any good? Yeah, that's a great chip. But the procedure is pretty similar if you want to go down the AMD route as well. Right, so what's next? Next, you need a motherboard. It's the biggest and perhaps the most important part of your PC. This is what I definitely want to know about. So what does a motherboard actually do? Every single component in your computer connects directly to the motherboard so that they can talk to one another. Ah, oh, well this is pretty big and looks like you can plug loads of things into it. Yeah, that's the one. We're going to be using one of ASUS's new P8 Z77 V Pro models, which supports the latest Intel chips and the new third generation processors coming too. So what are all the different bits for? Well, we'll cover those as we go through, but for now, just stick it on top of the cardboard box as that's a pretty good place to start building. Right, so what goes in first? I would start with the processor. It goes in this socket here, and it will only go in one way, so you don't need to worry about putting it in the wrong way around. The key thing to all of this stuff is not to force anything. It will only fit together one way to protect the components. So it's a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. A bit like a jigsaw puzzle, but a better, because once you've finished, you can do more than just look at it. To install the processor, first remove this plastic cap. In this case, it just pulls off. Then push the lever under the catch and pull it up to release. Now look at the notches on the socket and line these up with that on the processor. I see. Well, that wouldn't fit the other way around. Exactly. Now, gently place the chip in and lower the socket clamp and push the lever to lock the processor in place. So the next thing we need to think about is heat. We need a heat sink and fan to keep the chip cool when it's running. Otherwise, it'll overheat and burn out, which could be an expensive mistake. Is that what this is? Uh, yes, that's it. Okay. But first, we need to use something called thermal paste to make sure there's a good contact between the chip and the heat sink. Some heat sinks come with it already applied, otherwise just spread a small amount evenly on the top. Done. So how do I attach the heat sink? First, place it on top of the chip and line up the push pins with the holes in the motherboard. Right. Okay, then at opposite corners, push them until they click. You need to make sure that it's secure and it's level and there's no gap between the chip and the heatsink. Then plug the cable from the fan into the socket labelled CPU fan on the motherboard. It can only go on one way round, so don't worry too much. Lovely. Now, depending on the heatsink, this could vary and on AMD chips, it's much more likely to be a clip mechanism instead. So do any other chips on the motherboard also need a fan to stop them from overheating? Well, sometimes you see a fan on the chip scent here, as this can get pretty hot as well. But more fans means more noise. One of this board's cool features is the specifically designed heatsink here, so it doesn't need any more fans. Just the main one in the case is enough to stop it getting too hot. Cool feature. I see what you did there. So, what's next? Next up is the memory. There are two main types of memory you're likely to come across, DDR2 and DDR3. The good news is they have notches in different places, so you physically can't put the wrong memory in your motherboard. OK, I have two sticks of memory here. Wouldn't it be better to just have one? Actually, no. To get the best performance, it's better to use them in pairs, as there are two memory channels. 
so make sure you're using matching memory, or even better, buy them as a matched kit. They go in here. You see how the channels are color coded? Mm. Too easy. I just put one in each blue slot. Yeah. So start by opening the tabs and make sure the notches line up so it's the right way around. Then push it in firmly and you should hear a click when it's in the right place. Lovely. Job done. So what next? Well, that's it for this part. Next time, we're going to be putting it all in a case. But I was just getting warmed up. Well, we'll carry on in the next video then. We'll see you guys on the other side. Bring your screwdrivers.